What's up, everybody? Well, I had an interesting idea for a video. I figured, why not make the laptop versus my secondary desktop and my primary desktop? Now, funny enough, I already did this whole video yesterday, so that's why I've got stuff on my desktop that says like laptop caps and whatnot, but found out my camera here decided it didn't want to record any audio. And then I thought, oh, no big deal, I'll just do voiceovers. But then I thought, well, sure, I can do that for like the setting screens and whatnot, but it's gonna be pretty lame listening and watching gameplay with no sound other than me talking. So I was like, fuck that. Last time I tried an idea like this, it did not work well because everything went to shit. So I figured this is a blessing in disguise. This time I can be even more perfect with it. So no, we're not gonna do any, we're gonna do some uh, benchmarks first on the laptop. Then we'll move to the secondary desktop. Then we'll move to the primary computer. And then the basis of the test is we'll run some benchmarks. I think we'll run Cinebench R23 and we'll, uh, we will run CPU Z's little benchmark as well. And then we will jump in to some actual games. And I picked Elden Ring, Forza, Horizon 5, and Cyberpunk. Elden Ring is the kind of easy to run game, Forza is the kind of middle, medium to run game, and then Cyberpunk, as we all know, even if it's not the most well put together game, it's still hard to run and it still looks really good. So that's pretty much that. So let's start doing, well, the benchmarks are already done, so I'm going to actually just jump into showing off all the computers. I had uh, even talked about all the specs and the monitor and the keyboards and all that stuff, but I would have had to re-talk all that in my voiceovers with no other sound, and that would have been weird. So. Without any more rambling, let's go look over all the different laptops. Well, all right, gonna have a quick look at the laptop itself now. So the laptop has a Ryzen 5900HX, and this particular model lets you uh, put a little bit more wattage into it through Armory Crate, so that's cool. So it can be a little bit faster than uh, anyone else that has that in it. Uh, then it comes with a 512 gig Intel M.2 Gen 3 uh, SSD M.2, and then I added a secondary uh, two terabyte Silicon Power M.2 Gen 3 as well. It only does Gen 3 on the uh, M.2 ports for whatever reason. It's still PCI 4.0 for the GPU, but not for those for some reason. Then it's got a vapor chain chamber cooler with liquid metal to cool. It's got a fan on each side over here and it blows out from here and then the back, there in the back and there on the side. So it's pretty decent at cooling, but it still gets a little warm on the CPU side. But anyway, then I also got 32 gigs of 3200 megahertz DDR4, CL20, HyperX Impact to be exact. And then for a GPU, it's rocking a RX 6800M, which is basically a 6700 XT just crammed into a laptop and gimped with power and cause power makes heat and it's a laptop. It's not gonna be, a, you can't put a 200 and something watt GPU in there. You'll get like 10 minutes of battery life and it'll overheat like a mofo. So moving on, we've got ourselves a Logitech. It's a Pro X Super Light. And then over here, we have a Black Widow, uh, Tournament Edition Chroma version two keyboard. Underneath the monitor here, we've got two Creative Pebble speakers, which sound great for being 20 bucks, and they're USB powered, so I hooked them right into the monitor. And then, last but not least on this guy, let me just close my little ch cheat sheet. The monitor is a 27 inch Acer Predator XB271HU, and that's in what? 1440p, 165 hertz monitor. IPS, and all that good stuff. So now that we've gone through all of that, let's hook the camera back to the tripod. And I've already done all the benchmarks and whatnot yesterday, so now it's time to jump in and do some gameplay. All right, starting off here, let's just take a quick look at hardware info here. And we will check this guy at the very end. That way we can see what the max temps were and all of that good stuff and how much wattage it used, all that good stuff. And this laptop definitely runs pretty warm, but it never throttles the CPU or anything. It's gotten all the way up to 9697, and it still hasn't throttled back performance to any meaningful level, so that's good. All right, here's all the SSD stuff. There's two in here right now. And there's the Vega graphics on the APU itself. Here's what we really want, though, the RX 6800M. So we'll come down here at the very end and check out all of the megahertz and all of that, the max temps. All right, there's the wear level. We've got 6.5% wear level, not too bad after nine months of use. And then there's all of my wireless and 
whatnot. Now here is CPU-Z. It's a 5900HX. There's all the core speed, level cache, and all that. Motherboard right here. Now I'm on the 316 BIOS still, because I want my max RPMs. Now the GPU is PCI 4.0. I got 32 gigs of RAM. Here's all the specs of it right here. A little bit more info on it. Single rank and all of that. Unfortunately, I always thought this was dual rank, but it is single. Graphics. Here's the one that counts. And then there's the onboard. And then we'll do a quick bench in a second. I just want to go over here to the CPU Z thing and check out the 6800M just a little bit more. It's got lots of romps and shaders and all that good stuff. This is a very powerful laptop. But, and resizable is always on. So, let's move on. Okay, CPU benchmarks all done. Single core, we got 612.8. And for multi, we got 6,234.7. So now, let's move on. Okay, so Cinebench R23 is all done. We got 13,370 for multi. Single core was 1,428. So not bad at all for a laptop. I think that's actually better than my desktop, secondary anyway. So now, let's move on. Well, 3D Mark Fire Strike is all done. And we got 27,569, which is good. 32,881 for graphics, 26,366 for physics, and a combined of 12,865. There's the average, my score, and the best down here. And now with that, let's move on. Well, all right, 3D Mark Time Spy is all done. We got 11,399. For graphics score, 11,638. CPU is 10,211. Here's our average, my score, and the best. And with that, why don't we move on? All right, guys, we are in Elden Ring, and if I didn't mention, we're not doing any screen recorded uh, gameplay in this video, because that's just gonna make all the computers, even my uh, secondary and main desktop will get less FPS if you screen record. So we're just gonna do all of this with the camera. Eventually, I really need just to get a uh, capture card. I mean, I'm starting to get quite a bit of subs. I think it would be beneficial to just get like an external capture card. Then I can get footage from the laptop, desktops, any of my consoles, anything that can be hooked up to an HDMI can easily be hooked up to that. So anyway, let's just look at these settings real quick. We're going to be playing at 1440p, which I feel like on an external monitor is the perfect resolution for this laptop. Except for eSports. eSports, I'd drop back down for some games. So now let's look at the advanced settings real quick. I've just got it completely maxed out on the laptop. It's only 1440p and this game isn't the hardest thing to run anymore. It was a little flaky when it first came out and there's actually an update today. It just went to 1.06 today. So maybe it'll be even smoother now or maybe it'll be even worse. Who knows? That's the fun of updates. You never know what you're going to get. But let's hop into the game and see how she plays. All right. Let's begin the gameplay. And it still has some stutters here and there. But it's a night and day difference compared to what it used to be like. This thing used to be stutter central. But now, after it like pre caches everything, it's pretty damn smooth. But this is what I do I found this little place to like level up. So I just kind of come here on my Steam Deck right before bed and just, you know, for a half hour, 45 minutes or so, I'll just kill these guys, get some experience. And then every once in a while, I try to beat the bosses I can't beat. And so far, I've beaten two. I beat some weird grafted guy. Oh no. And see, even I die sometimes when I get overzealous. But that's the beauty of this. Even if I die, it's whatever.
Because you can just respawn right back here, get on your horse. Go grab your body wherever it is. And start all over and try to be a little more careful next time. Of course, in the video I want to try back like a badass, but normally I don't try to take on three like that. Normally I try to take on like one at a time. Whoop. Nope, see now there's three again. I don't really like that. Nope, didn't have enough time. Alright, well we got one. Now we can heal real quick. And finish those two off. And now I can get back on my horse, acquire these materials, heal again, because they just gave me a freebie. Now let's go fuck this guy up. Revenge! Actually, no, I don't think that's the guy that killed me. Alright, kill that guy, then I usually run up here while the other guys are just coming out of the ground. And they usually won't give chase all the way up here. Because they won't know where I go, and then I'll usually be able to kill one of them before the other one comes up. Well, nope, the one did come and give chase this time. Well, fine, you want to die? That's alright. And then this guy usually comes up and goes, what you guys doing? I heard the noises. And then I'm all like, oh, nothing. And then just kill him. And this guy comes out, dodge him. Oh, nope, I want to be freaking targeted, damn. Oh, poison. Fuck you and your poison, get out here. All right, I think that's more than good enough. So now, why don't we move on to the next game? Well, all right, guys, we are in Forza Horizon now, and we're gonna be playing at 1440p. We got the frame rate at 165 hertz, V-Sync is on, because it's not like we're getting anywhere near 165 anyway. No motion blur or any of that nonsense. Now let's go have a look at the graphics I got. It's custom, but it's pretty much just extreme with MSAA turned down a notch. And there we go. We just went through all the settings, so now let's run a quick benchmark, and then we'll hop into the game and see how it plays. Well... All right, guys, the benchmark just got done. So, we've got our game version up there on the left. We used 8.3 gigs of video memory, 13 gigs of system memory. There's the GPU and CPU mod up there. It gives you your suggested preset, which is ultra, but we're doing custom. We had three stutters. We were limited by GPU by 99.1%, and we got 77 FPS at the end of the day. So, now, why don't we go ahead and hop into the actual game and see how it looks and plays. Alright guys, we are in some Forza Horizon 5 now. Got some Viper action going on. This car is absolutely awesome. But as cool as it is, even if I could afford it, I would just never use it because it's a race car for the track and I just don't do tracks. There's not that many cool tracks in Michigan. And that is why my top car is still the Tesla Plaid for now. That thing is just awesome. And it's got so much tech in it. And that'd be great for a techie like me. Because I'm a techie and a car guy. So, it's right up my alley. And then if I feel like having some engines, I still have my Lincoln and my freaking Fiero. Which were both gifts, so I'm going to keep them for forever, basically. <laughs> and if they're undrivable, I'll just keep them in a garage and just admire them. Hell yeah! Off-road USA Viper, let's do this shit. Wow, I hadn't driven on this road yet, so I'm kind of glad I came down here. Where I'm in a game, it's kind of hard to, like, find anything new, honestly. 
Well, that was fun. This game's graphics are absolutely great, though. They did a good job on this game. Oh yeah, I almost never do this, but let's uh, go to the outside of the car as well. I just don't drive very well like this, but... Figure we'll get a little footage real quick. Because some people do like playing like this. And it does change the FPS a little bit, depending on what camera view you're going. But alright, back into the cockpit view, and I think that's good enough, so why don't we go ahead and move on to the next game. Well alright guys, here we are in Cyberpunk 2077, so I figure we'd just go through the settings I'm going to use on the laptop. We got B-Sync at 165, because again, it's never going to happen with Cyberpunk, even on the lowest settings I don't think we'd ever hit that. And we're going to be playing at 1440p. Now let's go take a look at the graphics I run, now I do custom on here too. We got maxed out field of view, motion blur, I don't know why that's on, but I almost never have that on, so go away motion blur. Sometimes I don't, or it must have been when I was flipping through the things to set it up. I flipped back once because I accidentally went to, too far on something and... It probably just forgot, or I forgot to put it back to the way it was off. Now we're not going to do any ray tracing because this laptop is not good at ray tracing, but I am running FSR 1.0 on ultra quality. So, that being said, let's go run a benchmark and see how it does, then into the game. Alright, we averaged 78, got a minimum of 45, which I don't know where that happened, because even during the bar scene it seemed like it dropped down to like 59, but whatever it says, max FPS was 114. And then here's the settings, at least a little bit of them. Not too much to really be that useful, but... Alright, I think that's more than good enough. Let's hop into the game. Alright guys, we are in the game now. So let's just run around a little bit here in the city. Get ourselves some footage here. Of how smooth or unsmooth it is. And how good or not good it looks in your guys' opinion. But, I think this looks great. Since I'm using FSR, it has a little bit of softness to it if you look at things farther off into the background, but... Are you really focusing on that while you're playing a game? I'm not. I'm focusing on what's right in front of me. And, from what I can see, all of that looks good. Man, the frickin' ads in this game are something else. And the graffiti is all really cool, too. Not funny. That's a cool looking car. Almost looks like a Lamborghini. And that actually almost looks like our old Cadillac we used to have when I was a kid. Obviously, it didn't have two wheels in the front, but we had like a 77 Cadillac Berets. The thing was a boat, if there ever was a definition for the word boat. And it had a 510 cubic inch engine, which put out a whopping, are you ready for this? 200 horsepower. But that's just because they had so much emissions equipment on it that it really just neutered the thing. It still had like almost 400 foot pounds of torque though, so that thing would spin the tires through all first gear and second gear. I still remember my grandpa showing me what it could do one day, and I was like, damn. As a kid, it felt fast. Today, it probably wouldn't feel too fast because I'm used to my Lincoln, but. I did not get run over this time. Most of the time, I get run over in this game. 
I'm gonna try in all of the things to not let that happen this time. It's my goal. Don't even care if I die in Elden Ring. I already died once. First time I got all the footage, I didn't die, but of course, second time around, since I had to redo all of this because I had no sound in the first first run through, but that was my own fault for not checking it for sound like I usually do. Usually I'm pretty thorough and I check uh, screen recorded and camera recorded stuff real quick before I start the next section just to make sure it actually recorded because I'd rather go back and do the one I just did or at the very beginning start over and just redo the intro and I would have noticed there was no sound, but nope, didn't check it, so it's my own fault and that's why I've got to redo it all now, but it was such a fun idea. I was still not that mad and I messed up on a couple of things. Especially my other computer, it was like getting up to 88 degrees Celsius during some of the benchmarks. And I'm like, well, that's not fucking right. It used to max out 82. What the hell is going on? So I had to do some fin some fiddling with that, too. So nothing went quite right. So I'm kind of happy I have to redo everything because I can try to make this a lot better this time around. But I think three minutes is probably good enough footage. Otherwise, this, this is going to be a two-hour video. It's probably going to already be like a freaking hour long already. But let us move on to the secondary computer. Well, all right, we're all done running the games and the benchmarks and all of that stuff, so let's just scroll down through here really fast, and we'll look at all of the different clocks and temps and all of that. As you can see here, our CPU got kind of toasty. It got up to 96.4 tops. Keep on scrolling down. Here's what all the drives got up to temp-wise. Not very different from how they were just stock on the desktop. So that's good. Good cooling for them. Now here we go. Here's the 6800M temps. We got up to 87. 90 on the junction, memory junction. And the hotspot got up to 102. And then here's the rest of the wattage and whatnot. Battery, all that good stuff. And that's pretty much the bottom. None of this stuff really matters. So now let's r move on. Well, all right, guys, moving on to the secondary computer here. This is pretty much where I do my immersive gaming when my other computer heats up the other room up to like 84, 86. I can't take it, and it's probably not good for the TVs, the consoles, or the computers or anything in there. So once it gets to about that temp, I say, all right, time to head to the other room. Now, my master bedroom, at least it's a giant ass freaking tall ceiling built kind of like a barn, really. So it's always cooler in here. And even when I play games for hours on end on this computer, even though it Outputs just about as much heat. It never really gets too much over 78 in here. And that's late at night when the AC doesn't really turn on much because it's not that hot out. Because the way mine works is, it's just downstairs in the dining room. That's the only one that matters. Doesn't care what the temp is, any other room in the house. I don't have one of those cool smart ones that can turn it on depending on what room. I wish, but I'm not putting that kind of money into this house when I'm about to sell it. But anyway, now, why don't we hop over, take this camera off the tripod and go take a, cl a closer look while I explain all the different parts of this thing. All right. Right, guys here we are inside of my secondary PC here and to start off with the CPU is a 9900k it's at 5 gigahertz all the time 24 7 even on the desktop I just like it being there just kind of cool back in the day it was a cool thing to have 5 gigahertz so I just leave it there it was a goal always wanted to do it finally did it bam just leaving it there like that nowadays I don't really care about that kind of stuff anymore but I just think it was cool nostalgic just leaving it there no need to downclock it no need to overclock it any farther probably doesn't have anything left in the tank anyway Unless you really pump the volts in there for maybe 100, maybe 200 extra megahertz. Anyway, moving on from that, it is cooled. Or no, let's do the, me the motherboard first. It is a Gigabyte Z390 Aorus Master motherboard. You can see right down there. Then for memory, we have 32 gigabytes of Patriot Viper memory. Now this is the 4400 megahertz CL19 memory, but since I have all the banks populated, I can't hit that. I can only do 4000 at CL19. And I could probably tighten the timings down a little, but it was such a bitch just to get this RAM stable at all. So I was just like, nope, done. I just want to play games. Left it at that. Maybe sometime I'll mess with it a little more, but not now. So then the CPU is cooled with an EK 360 millimeter all in one. So I've got the tube just kind of up top. I know people say you shouldn't do that, but it doesn't gurgle, doesn't make any noise. It's completely fine. So there it is all the way down to there. And it kind of just goes down into the little basement. And then the star of the show here is my EVGA RTX 3080 for the Win 3 Ultra. Even takes three freaking connectors. It's a 450 watt BIOS on there. And then you've got the little, this one's the one that has the red clown lips. 
And then if we can try to see, I don't think we're gonna be able to see the fans much. Nope, you can't. I can't get a good angle, even with this little teeny camera. And then you probably can't see it too well, but down in there we've got a RM, or a Corsair RM1000 watt power supply. It's a gold power supply powering this whole ordeal. And then the case, that is a Dark Flash DLX21 mesh, I believe. I'll put that on the description and whatnot, because I might mess up some of these, whatchamacallits. And then, last but not least, the drives. We've got a 960 Pro Samsung as the boot drive and the M.2. And then there are two SSDs down here in the compartment. One is a two terabyte Crucial. I believe it's the BX500. And then there's a one terabyte Silicon Power in there as well. But I don't really remember its model number. So that's about it. And then you can close it up. It's just held together by magnets. And you can take this door right off too when you want to work on your computer. So that's pretty sweet. And another than that, I couldn't quite clean the top. I dusted this out, but I couldn't really clean the tops of these fans so well unless I took them out. And I didn't want to do that. So they're a little dusty and crappy looking. So sorry about that. Then a quick front. There's the front. No drives, no nothing. Just mesh. And all right, now why don't we go and look at some benchmarks and whatnot. I almost forgot to do the peripherals for the secondary computer. So for a mouse, we're using a Zeiss rail, extra five Zeiss rail to be exact. It's got these weird little divots on the side. It's hard to show them off on camera, but your hand's sitting there. It's pretty cool. It's a little small for me though. So I've got two final mice on the way to replace this one and the Pro Super Light Logitech. Then moving over here for a keyboard, we have a Corsair K70 Rapid Fire. It's got the silver switches. So that's cool. And then and under here, we've got the same Pebble two or speakers here. They're just 2.0 speakers, and they got little subs in the background. And then the monitor is a Dell or Alienware uh, AW3418DW. It's a 3440 by 1440, 120 hertz IPS screen. And there we go. And there's everything from a distance. Oh, and then we've got ourselves some Steer Steel Series Octus headphones under here. And then there's the little, there's the little controller for it for volume and everything, as well as a bowl. So now, let's move into the game. All right, this might be a little hard to read. I don't know how it's going to come out once it's edited and everything. But here's the CPU stuff for the 9900K. It's at 1.3 volts, 5 gigahertz on the dot. All that level 3 cache and stuff there, the stepping. Here's the motherboard and all of its stuff. All right, and then over here to the memory tab. Here's all the memory clocks and all that good stuff. A quicker look if we click on the, oops, there we go. Quicker look if we click on that, there's all the info about them. And then there's the GPU. And then we'll come back and do that bench in a second. But first, let's go over here to the GPU-Z. So here's the 3080, here's some more specs on it. Now these are the ones that are hard to read, so I'll try to read out the stuff that matters. The boost is uh, 1,995 megahertz for the GPU, and the memory clock is basically 605 over stock. Now here's the HW info stuff for temps and all that, so we'll check this out at the very end of the video, and I'll make sure to read out all the temps because I'm sure that's going to be important to people and all the what you would call it wattages and all of that if you guys can't read because it looks like from this window it's a little tough to read but i don't know how it's going to be when it's completely edited so hopefully it's good i'm still learning how to use obs so there might be a way for me to get higher quality because this doesn't look quite like 3440 by 1440 to me here's all of the ssds and all of that We'll just keep scrolling until we get to the bottom. There's a lot more stuff in this guy than in my laptop. And then here we go. Here's all the stuff for the, uh, what do you call it, 3080. And now we've reached the bottom. So let's move on. Benchmark just got done here for the 900K. Single core got 5,600, or not 5,000, 564.7. This got 5,942.8. So there we go. On to the next benchmark. Benchmark for Cinebench is all finished. Multi, we got 12,611. And then for single, we got 1,299. 
So it's even slower than normal for whatever reason. Probably because I, ha- I accidentally left OBS in the DOM, but that's okay. It's still a very nice CPU, even if it doesn't have the highest single core anymore. Fire strikes all finished. We got 30,617. And our graphics score is 42,420. Nice. 25,426 for physics and a combined of 11,012. Now it's time for us to move on. Now time spies all finished and we got 16,848. Our graphics is 18,224 and our CPU score is 11,800. So we actually beat out my laptop CPU on this particular test. Interesting. Well, now it's time to move on. All right, guys, getting into some games now. We're gonna start with Elden Ring. I know this game doesn't actually support ultra wide. I kind of forgot about that before I jumped into it and picked it. But again, we already did all the videos for the other computer, and they're not muted this time. They've got audio, so we're just gonna wing it. So all the settings on here are completely maxed out because Elden Ring is not the hardest game to run, even from my laptop. It can handle it no problem. Little stutter here and there, but the game stutters here and there on everything, as far as I've seen. But there was a new update today, so maybe that'll change on here. But now, let's hop into the game. All right, guys, we are in Elden Ring now on the secondary PC. Doesn't do ultra wide, but I think there are like ways to force it to do it. But I didn't want to go through all the trouble of doing that just to make this one video. So we're just going to let it be black bars. It's whatever. No big deal. We'll still get some footage. Woo. I missed him, but at least I made them both miss me. All right, come down here, little bitch. Wow, this guy is like slippery. All right, now we got that guy curious. Let's lead him away from his buddies. Ooh, good, I like when he jumps up there. And there we go. Now we can just carefully turn around so we don't fall off the damn thing and die. That won't help us level up. <laughs> oh, there we go. As soon as he comes up a little, you can lock on to him. Now we'll run up here. Kill this motherfucker. And then we'll kill this guy too. Maybe. Aw, oh, you bitch. Oh, well, let's just heal so they don't accidentally kill me. I already died once on the laptop. Don't want to die again. Hey, cool, I just got a freebie from killing so many. Haha, <laughs> come up here. Oh. Oh, can't get up there. There we go, I knew I could get up there somewhere. Quick heal. Force them to come to me. Come on down here. Come on. <laughs> Bring around the rosy. Oh no. Whatever. I've got so many of these healing things now, it's so whatever when they like do damage to me. I don't even care. As long as they don't kill me and I can't get my body, which basically cannot happen here. I can't really see any circumstance where if they get lucky enough to kill me because I got too overzealous that I can't just come back and get my body back real quick. That's what I usually do. Don't die too often, but still die every once in a while, as you saw. All right, now we'll just head back down here to reset this for when we move on to the main computer. Kind of 
still want some badass armor. It's not like this armor is awful, but I still want some cool armor. That's still cool, but you just get it from the beginning, so I kind of just want different armor, I think. Anyway, why don't we go ahead and move on to some Forza. Alright guys, we are now in Forza Horizon 5 on the secondary computer. So, we're gonna run at 3440 by 1440, because this game actually does support Ultra Wide. It doesn't look like it right now, but trust me, it does. No resolution scaling, V-Sync on, because we're not gonna probably get anywhere near 120 FPS anyway. And there we go. Let's go hop and look at the custom graphics. Again, this is basically just extreme preset. For whatever reason, that likes to just keep not being on extreme. So I, I keep going in and returning it back on every time I come in here. There we go. So it's pretty much just extreme. I don't know why it says custom. I must have messed with something. And I don't like that either. So with that, why don't we go ahead and do a quick benchmark? Well, the benchmark's all done on the secondary computer here. And here's all of our game version, driver version, and all that stuff. Windows version, resolution. We use 6.88 gigs of video memory. 13 gigs of system memory. There's our GPU model and CPU model. And here's our settings. We got four stutters. We were 97% GPU limited. And we achieved 85 FPS. So, now with that, let's hop into the game and see how she plays. Well, all right, guys. Here we are in Forza Horizon 5 on the secondary computer. Ultra wide. And games like this are extremely fun on it. I don't think this has a 7th gear. Oh, it does. I lied. It does have a 7th gear. This is basically a fucking race car. But as such, it's not exactly the fastest in a straight line. But it does kick ass in the corners, but... Figure out we'll just drive around for two or three minutes or something like that. Oh, we had a couple of those little plastic things. I'm not gonna lie, that high-pitched whistling noise would probably deafen me after driving this car for a little while. Haha, I almost went off the road, but not quite. Take that. I showed that speed camera who's boss. You can't jump up there, Misty. I'm trying to make a video. <laughs> Misty's like, hey. Stop doing stuff. Pay attention to me, pretty much. She was about ready to jump up right in front of the camera and whatnot. And I would have crashed, so I paused for a second. You can still stay in here, Misty. Just go to the other chair. I'm not sitting in it. You can go hang out there. She's such a silly kitty sometimes. Alright, real quick. 
I don't really drive that well out in the outside view, but I know some people do, so let's just get uh, like 30 seconds or so of outside view real quick. I'm not that good at driving from this view. I almost never do anymore. As a kid, I always did, but ever since I found out I can do bumper view and cockpit view, I've much preferred those views. But all right, I think that's good enough, so let's move on. All right, guys, we're in Cyberpunk now, and before we run the benchmark, I wanna just go through the custom settings I run on here. We got maxed out field of view, motion blur again, stop being on. I don't know how you keep getting turned on. I keep turning you off and it keeps getting turned back on. Jeez. All right, though, other than that, we pretty much have everything else on high. And I do have ray tracing on. This is an NVIDIA GPU, but I just have ray trace reflections and ray trace lighting on medium. And then we're running balanced DLSS because even quality can't keep me above 60 at all times. And even balance can't quite do it. Although last time I did this, it didn't, but maybe this time I make a lot of me. Let's go run the benchmark and find out, shall we? All right, our average FPS for the benchmark was 82.52. We got a minimum of 55.79, maximum 101. And then here's a little bit more stuff. We were running on balanced DLSS with VSync and all that stuff. No windowed mode or nothing. And then there's our resolution. So with that, let's hop into the game and see how it plays. All right, guys, we're in Cyberpunk now on the secondary PC. And now we can kind of walk around and that way we can compare it to the laptop and then soon the desktop as well. I'm saving the best for last, of course. But plays pretty smooth. But according to the benchmark, somewhere along the line, it might it must drop down to 55 still, but I, I don't know where that's going to be because we're in the high 80s out here. Try not to get run over. It seems like I almost always get run over. Run around too, just for fun. But so far, so good, very smooth. And we got G-Sync on, so it should be. And that's the one thing I wished I had on my secondary computer. I probably should just sell that monitor and get one, a 1440p with FreeSync because I like variable refresh rate. It's pretty awesome. And the laptop screen itself has it, but you can't use G-Sync with AMD cards. It doesn't work that way. It works opposite. Sometimes you can use FreeSync monitors with NVIDIA GPUs. Hey, it's a guy made out of food. Ha, look at that tiny little pawn shot. Yep. And if I'm going, and if you guys like these videos and whatnot, I am totally going to get a capture card so I can also get gameplay footage without it fucking with shit. And then I can just use this camera. Uh oh. They're mad at me. Who the hell was that anyway? Oh well, I guess it doesn't matter. And we're using about 8 gigs out of our 10 gigs of RAM on this thing. 
They really should have given the 3080 more RAM. Even my laptop has more VRAM than this thing. It's only two gigs more, but still. All right, though. Why don't we go ahead and move on to the main PC? It's gonna be fun, but it's gonna take a lot longer to do that one because there's a lot more to that one than my other computers. Okay, this still looks hard to read, but we stayed at five gigahertz the whole time. There was no throttling. We maxed out at 81 for core temperatures, it looks like, so not bad. And there was no thermal throttling of any kind. We went all the way up to 233 watts of CPU power, though. So that's a lot of CPU power. All right, scroll through all these guys. I'm hoping this will be more legible once I'm done editing it. Our Samsung got up to 48C, our 840 Pro, and the other one kind of just chilled. All right, and we went up to 73 on the GPU, hotspot 85, 89 for hotspot, and the RAM was 89, excuse me. And here's all the rest of the memory temperatures right here. And then that's about it. And then I also realized that I didn't show you guys my Precision X settings at the beginning like I meant to. So we've got, there's our memory clock, GPU clock, voltage, and power. And all that good stuff. And then what all the fans are running at. So there we go. Now we can move on. Well, all right, guys. It's time for us to move on to the main star of the show. This is my main computer. I built it by hand. Danielle actually helped me make the case because it came completely, whatchamacallit, in pieces. And I'm not the best at uh, wanting to follow instructions, but luckily she was there to keep me in line and just go, no, you'll break shit. I will read off what to do. And it was actually kind of fun experience, but... Anyway, this is where I spend most of my time gaming. I still game a lot on the laptop, but this is where I come when I really want to just be immersed. So, why don't we pop you guys off of the camera and go and take a closer look. And I'll list off all of the specs of all of the various stuff, and then we'll get into the benchmarks and gameplay and all of that stuff next. Well, all right, starting with our CPU up here, we've got a Ryzen 5950X, and this one has Performance Boost Overdrive 2, Negative Curve, and it has dynamic overclock switching turned on. So that allows me to basically have some pretty decent single core while letting the other cores clock up to like 5.575 gigahertz, I think. Because I wanted 4.6, but that required 1.23 volts. And then that started being way too hot all of a sudden. So I don't know why. It's not like my radiator can't handle it. But anyway, after that, we have for a motherboard, we have a Asus ROG Crosshair 6, or no, 7 Dock Hero motherboard. That's what it is. And then for RAM, we have some G-Skill Trident Z Neo, and it's stock 3600 CL14 RAM, but I've got it overclocked to 3800 megahertz at CL14 uh, on all of the sub timings and all of that stuff. And I've gotten all the timings really fucking tight. It's as tight as it can be, really, and still be stable. So that's awesome. Oh, the CPU is cooled by a Tech N block with a 420 millimeter Black Ice Nemesis GTR radiator. And it has some Noctua Industrial Performance 3000 RPM fans on it. No, I don't let them get that fast. I've got a little controller in the background limiting them their max, but they were the coolest looking and the best 140 millimeter fans I could find. So I thought that would be a good one to go with. Then down there we got a little reservoir. It's supposed to be RGB, but unfortunately that part just stopped working one day. Classic thermal take, mean thermal take, I guess, but I'm not about to drain my whole loop and change everything around just for some stupid RGB lights. I got plenty of RGB going around in that general area anyway, so that's okay. And sometimes it even comes back alive, but it didn't really want to for the video today. Whatever, no harm, no foul. And then the coolant is Go Chiller. It's basically got a bunch of metal flakes in it. So it's insanely conductive. I think it actually has, uh, what did they call it? Like silicon in it. I'd have to go look at the actual stuff, but it looks really freaking cool. I wish you guys could see it better. You'd be able to see it sloshing around in there better if the RGB lights were on, but maybe some keen eyed viewers can still see it in there moving around. Anyway, though, for drives, we've got a one terabyte Western Digital SN850, and then we have a SATA four terabyte uh, drive hanging out in the back kind of area in here. And then we've got ourselves a 3090 Founders for a GPU hooked up here, and man, this thing's a great looking GPU, and it's very quiet as well. It may not hit crazy ass clocks like some of the uh, 
other board partner cards can, but it's at least quiet and it still gets me lots of performance. And then to power this whole thing, we have an EVGA 1600 watt supernova. I am totally prepared for 13th gen and the 4000 series, uh, uh, GPUs from Nvidia. Even if they do take like 350 watts and 800 watts or 600 watts or whatever the hell, I am ready and I can handle it. So then coming down there, we've got my little viewfinder. I use my phone as a viewfinder because this thing, this camera I use as viewfinder is tiny. All right, for a mouse, I use a Final Mouse Starlight Phantom. This one's actually, what is it? It's number 5071. So it's actually a pretty low model number. That's pretty cool. Even though it's a pretty high model mouse, there's still not that many of them out in the wild. And then for a keyboard, this is a K100 Corsair. And this one uses optical switches, so it actually uses lasers. Very cool. So they're pretty much, the springs and stuff can wear out, but I don't really see the lasers wearing out anytime soon. And it's got a very cushy arm pad. All right, and then for the main star of the show, we have a LG C1 OLED TV which makes for an excellent monitor. Great blacks, awesome HDR, uh, the mouse and everything when I play games, I haven't felt anything as responsive as this in terms of PC monitors. I know there's a couple out there that are, but none of mine are. So this is like, it feels like my mouse is an extension of my hand, especially this final mouse. So beyond that, for speakers here, underneath we've got some Sony speakers. This was an old surround sound unit that I just kind of repurposed into a 2.0 system with a sub. So we've got all those guys up there. There. And then down here, we've got the actual receiver. And here's the model number right there, if anyone's interested. It's kind of old, so I doubt anybody wants one of these anymore, but still a 1000 watt receiver and it kicks ass. And then farther down over here, that's our 250 watt 10 inch powered Sony sub. And then we have our two battery backups. One, the little ones for the TV all by itself. And then the bigger one is for the computer. And I don't have this, I don't have this guy hooked up to them at all because you don't need power in an outage situation sound is the last of your worries when the power goes out. You just want to save your game, save your work, and turn the PC off safely. So, now that we are done with that, why don't we go and look at some benchmarks? All right, couple of things here I almost forgot to mention. This is the controller I use in my main computer room here. It is a Razer Wolverine Ultimate. It's really cool, I like the clicky, little clicky keys, but unfortunately, they painted the frickin' buttons on. Luckily, I know them by heart, but it's kinda stupid on a $150 controller for them to just paint the uh, letters on there. They should be like on a normal Xbox and just be a part of the plastic, you know? But it's whatever. If I ever felt like it, I could probably keep the button and put whatever one I wanted on there. So not a big deal. Then we also have our Corsair Virtuoso XTs here with a little mic detachable microphone that I've learned to take off when I start doing my voiceovers. Otherwise, it tends to smash into this guy. And this guy is my Razer Siren V2 Pro. Got it on a much better boom arm than I had on the original unboxing video of that because the other boom arm was shit and I couldn't even put it away without feeling like I was gonna break it. So there's that. And then we've also got my Series X, or, uh, Series X and PS5 controller right there, as well as all the remotes for the various things like the T2 TVs. Then down here, that's the Series X's little home. Then we've got the Switch right there. And then lastly, we got the PS5 down here. All right, let's have a quick look at all of our stuff here. Starting off with our CPU, AMD Ryzen 5950X. It's code name, Max TDP, technology, core voltage, all that good stuff. A bunch of stuff that I don't even know what all that instructions do, to be perfectly honest with you guys. Uh, level 3 cache, all that. Here's the main board. It's a, RG, it's a ROG Corsair 6 Dark Hero. And we're on the latest BIOS and all of that. Same thing with everything with the laptop. That's the only one that I have one behind because I didn't want, I wanted all my RPM. They took away 1,000 RPM and I was not happy. So here's my RAM info right there. More info there. There's the 3090 info here. And I realized HDR was on, so I had to go back and re-record some stuff that wasn't quite legible. And then we'll come back and do this bench. That's one of the things that wasn't legible. Here's the GPU Z info for the 3090. It is quite the beast of a card, if I do say so. But for $1,500, it damn well better be. But for some games, I'm already hankering for more, like Cyberpunk, for example. So resizable bar is also enabled. Now here's hardware info. I'm going to leave this running the whole time so we can get an accurate 
uh, representation of temperatures throughout all the benchmarks. And I remembered when I redid everything else, I remembered to play the games and everything, do everything I did so we can get accurate readings. There we go. Here's our uh, GPU info all up there. ULPS stuff. Uninterrupted power supply, if anyone's interested. And there we go. And then here's my MSI settings. I remember to do this because I forgot precision on the last one. So we're maxed out on core voltage, plus 135 core, 500 memory. Maxed out power limit, maxed out temp limit. So now, let's move on. Okay, we got 642.7 for single core. And then we got 12,718 for multi. Not too bad. There are faster CPUs, but still not bad, considering it's two years old. Cinebench R23 is all finished. So multi, we got 28,328. Single core, 1,488. And there's where it stands. Not even quite as good as an Intel laptop, but I think there's more single in there. I got to do more tweaking. But let us move on. Here's the Fire Strike score. We got 40,552. And there's all the average scores and all that stuff. Graphics score is 47,593. Physics was 38,856. Combined was 19,841. All right, our time score is 19,101. We got... 20,178 for graphics and 14,281 for CPU score. And then there's our averages and whatnot. So now let us move on. All right, guys. We are in Elden Ring now on my main PC here. And we're going to run it at 3840 by 2160 max settings. So let's go check those out real quick. This is just for the people that skip around. They might not have seen me do the Elden Ring settings for the other two computers. And each computer might have different settings. This is the one game that most of my computers could just do maxed out. The Steam Deck's the only one that can't handle it. But all right, now let's hop into the game and see how she plays. Well, here we are in Elden Ring. So let's go get ourselves a little bit of footage here. I call on you to do battle. <laughs> there we go. Kill him. <laughs> I'm, I'm most used to playing this game on here. Mostly because it's such a giant screen. You can really just see everything that's going on. That and it looks great. Oh, fuck you. Oh, eat a dick. See, you're still dead, so... End result's still the same, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally, like, locked onto a different one, but it still helped me kill that one, so whatever. I'm okay with it. Ah, oh, fuck you. Alright, now, we're not playing that game. Well, we got rid of one. Now we'll heal. No, I want you to freaking get this one. Sometimes the locking on in this game ticks me off. Gotcha. Now we'll heal. Call our horse back. Plunder. 
Or pillage, as they like to say. Pillage and plunder. Come on up here, guys. Come one, come all. Alright, we'll just heal again, because you never be too careful with these guys. Alright, is that everybody? Nope, there's one left. I thought I killed him, but I guess not. He dead now, though. And this is the place that I go to do most of my leveling up. And as you can see on this computer, it is definitely the smoothest. That frame time bar is like, smooth as can be. So let's just do that for the next time I play. And let's move on to some Forza. All right. We're in Forza Horizon now. So let's just take a quick look at the settings. We got HDR on, 3840 by 2160, 120 FPS, no resolution scaling, VSync is on, full screen on, don't need to show FPS, no ocean blur is off, the rest of that stuff's kind of pointless. As for graphics, we pretty much have the game maxed out besides MSAA and TAAA, and I don't like FXAA, so I've got that off too. I mean, maybe TAA is good, but I just kind of noticed that here, and I don't know what that setting really does, so I don't want to fuck with it. Because this is uh, how I play the games normally, and that's not there normally, so I don't want to just put a wrench in the whole idea of the videos here. So now, let's go run a quick benchmark. Alright guys, benchmark's all finished. Here's our game version, driver version, Windows version, our resolution. We use 7.34 gigs of memory here, 13.51 system memory. There's our GPU and CPU right there, and all of our video settings, and it suggests we run on extreme, of course, this thing's a badass. And then over here, we had one stutter, or 99.9% .9 GPU limited, yes, I believe that. And we got 75 FPS, so pretty good. Pretty much about the same FPS I get on my laptop and my other computer. The other one's like 10 FPS ahead or something. I think it gets like 89 average, the ultra wide. But now, Let's hop into the actual game. All right, guys. Here we are in Forza. Forza Horizon 5, to be exact, on the main computer. So I figure, guys, we'll just drive around real quick. This is not like a maxed out car or anything. I think this is the first car I ever really got in the game. Oh, 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 we're going off-road. Off-road USA. Here we go, we're back.
All right, let's hop to the outside of the car because I know some people like driving like this and it does change the frame rate a little bit. way too far. That engine would have been toast probably in real life. One downshift too many. Alright, though, I think that's more than enough gameplay. So, why don't we hop into some cyberpunk? Alright, guys, jumping into some cyberpunk here. Here's all the settings I run, full screen, 4K, we got HDR on. Now let's go look at our graphic settings. Now it is custom. I have most things on high, a couple things on ultra. This guy right here kills your FPS hardcore if you go any higher than high, so I just leave him on high, and it doesn't even look any better as far as I'm concerned. And then, as you may notice, no ray tracing, and that is because you just can't really do it at 4K. Not with my 3090, anyway. Maybe you could squeak by if you had a 3090 Ti, but I sure as hell ain't buying one of those. Not when the new ones are coming so close. I almost bought a 3090 Ti and was like, no, nah, 2100 bucks for that little bit more boost. Why bother? Especially new cards will be coming out soon. And then like a couple weeks after I decided not to do that, all these leaks of uh, AMD's new things and, and, and uh, Nvidia's new shit started dropping. And I was like, hell yeah, glad I didn't buy that. Anyway though, Let's go run a benchmark. Okay, the benchmark just got done for Cyberpunk here. We averaged 87 FPS, minimum of 72, and we maxed out at 110. And here's the info. So I forgot to mention, we are also on DLSS or DLSS quality setting, just to give us a little bit more FPS. I could probably turn it off and still barely get over 60, but I'd rather be at a minimum of 72 than like 62 or 58 or something like that, you know? So now, let's go hop into the game and see how it plays. Here we are in the game. We'll turn the volume up a little bit. I turned it down a little bit here because I noticed on the other things it was a little bit overbearing. So at least this one is as simple as a little scroll wheel. <laughs> But yeah, runs great on this computer, as long as you don't turn ray tracing on and throw a little DLSS in there. So it's not really 4K anymore, but it's still really close when it's on quality. And it looks good. We'll just run around here. That's a man, baby! And the words of Austin Powers. I'm gonna jump on your Cadillac. Hello. Hi. Hot surface. All right, we'll leave you and your caddy alone. <clears throat> All right, still haven't gotten run over in any of this so far. I wonder if I can keep up my streak of not being run over. That person almost didn't. They were almost street pizza.
Yep, I will say the way I have my Ryzen uh, messed with and whatnot, I kind of throw power efficiency right out the window, but... We'll track that job, why not? Oh, I should have read the text message. Whoa, what's going on over here? Whoa, okay. Well, we should have left them alone. At least now you guys will get to see some load times, too. Pretty quick. Not the fastest of any load times out of any game I've had, but they're not bad. Alright, so we will leave those guys alone and get the heck out of here. For they will pwn me in the face. That wasn't even a challenge. He just shot me like one time and I was done. But I don't really have like great armor what, and I'm playing on one of the harder difficulties. I can't remember if I'm on the hardest or just the uh, second to hardest, but it's definitely not easy, that's for sure. But all right, I think that is more than good enough. So why don't we go ahead and wrap this video up? Okay, so now let's go through all of the temps here. We maxed out at, well, here's all the RAM and whatnot again, but we maxed out at 81 for CPU, it looks like. And we used 243 watts of power on this guy. Motherboard temps and all those other voltages and whatnot. At least this one's completely legible. So that's good. That's all the GPU info up there. Max watts we got up to thanks to UPLS. 657, not bad. We go back up to the top. More clocks and whatnot. Here's all the RAM info again. And a closer look at the temperatures again. And this is with Infinity Fabric and all that stuff maxed out at 1900. So, now. Moving on time. Well, all right guys, that is a wrap for this video. Sucks I had to redo the whole thing, but I'm kind of glad I did. I think I did a much better job second time around because I had already done everything once. So now if I, you guys actually like this, I am going to for sure get a, what do they call that? One of those boxes that can record, one of those streaming boxes. I know Ogato makes them. Capture card, that's the name. I can get an external capture card and then I can be able to just capture any game and it'll be a lot easier than just only doing camera for this. I know a lot of people like watching the screen recorded stuff too, but I'll get one of those. That way it won't interfere with any of the FPS of any of the various things. So with that, it's time to end. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, I can definitely make more of these. I probably won't make them, you know, three games each since it's three different computers and it's going to be like probably an hour and some change long video here, but I'll do one game at a time if people end up liking this little thing where it's laptop versus my two other computers. So let me know in the comments. I hope you guys enjoyed and till the next video, peace out guys.